tariffs, one of the blindfolded shotgun blasts of the tax spectrum is about to affect the automotive industry even more. I say even more instead of again, because there's an old tariff that I'm going to tell you about that still affects you to this day. Hi, I'm Steve and you're watching Car Simplified. Today we're talking about the chicken tax. The chicken tax, as the name applies, did not start out in the automotive sector. The United States was producing an immense amount of chicken and was exporting it to other countries. In Europe, prior to the 1960s, chicken was considered a delicacy. Europe began putting tariffs on U.S. chicken saying that it would just help with self-sufficiency. So this inexpensive chicken was flooding the market and Europe was like, whoa, inexpensive food? No thanks. After over a year of that, the U.S. got tired of it and by the emperor's decree, oh no, they call it an executive order over here, huh. 25% tax on potato starch, brandy, dextrin, and light trucks. 25% was massive, about 10 times the normal tariff at the time. Eventually, the US eased the tariffs on those food-related products and kept the light truck tariff in place. And what happened in between then and now? Uh, nothing. Uh, that's where we are today. That wasn't just a tariff on European light trucks either. That was the entire world until the North American Free Trade Agreement made it so the uh, US can import stuff from its hat and pants. As with any rule, either on purpose or because of the limitations of human language, there are loopholes. Some vehicles will be assembled in the country where their factory is and then taken apart and then rebuilt in the US because then it's US made. Sometimes you can modify the vehicle so it's no longer considered a light truck. Take the Subaru Brat for example. Cargo does not use seats. Seats are for passengers. Throw some seats in that truck bed, boom, passenger vehicle. Also, I've been saying a light truck the whole time. Commercial vans were also worked into the chicken tax at some point. The first generation Ford Transit Connect would be shipped to the US with seats in the back so it's classified as a passenger vehicle. And then they just convert it to a cargo van by stripping out all the seats, putting in metal panels where the windows used to be. And now you have a cargo van not a passenger van, which was the thing that was imported. Oh, and the seats get shredded up and recycled. Whatever. Here are a few other light trucks that the US missed out on. So here we are today making more tariffs that affect the automotive world. History doesn't repeat itself, it one-ups itself. In late July, Autolist.com polled over 1,400 visitors looking to buy new cars and asked them how they thought the tariffs would affect them. 41% of them said they were going to look into buying a used car instead of a new car because of these tariffs. The site also stated that they expect a car like a Nissan Sentra to go up over $3,000. That's almost 20% more than its previous price. Plus, we've got tariffs on a few common metals coming in now too. So I know you've been worried about how little plastic there is under the hood of your modern car. Uh, in the future, we're gonna be fixing that, don't worry. Who knows, maybe we'll even start making plastic suspension parts. So if you're gonna be shopping for a new car in the near future, what do you think of all these new changes? How do you feel this affects your car buying experience? The comment section is always open. I will never put a tariff on that subscribe button, but I can't say the same for the US, so hit it before they classify it as a light truck from another country and you gotta pay 25% tax on it. It's free, so that would be nothing, but hit it anyway. I forgot to make a trade war, car wars joke, so this thing's been on here the whole time for no reason, so there goes that. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.